How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Yep. Today we're going to be working on Abel again. And oh boy, doesn't this look like a bunch of fun. So continuing on with the uh, brake line, CTS and vent line upgrades, as well as a massive amount of fittings and uh, quick disconnect DOT airline to go between the two. This looks like a recipe for some absolute fun today. Uh, also, for those of you that have the older trucks, we are going to finish up the front brake line upgrade. I've got the fittings to replace the brass fittings. These were the ones that were missing. Thanks to uh, Rick at Superior Subi and Imports for helping uh, prototype this kit for the A-Zeros and get this put together for you guys in FMTV and LMTV land. Uh, also, I am going to replace the diaphragms in the front brake chambers as a, just another preventative uh, maintenance or uh, avoid r the rotting out of the brake chambers. Uh, basically the fronts on these trucks, they're all the same fr from what I can tell from the part numbers. Uh, the rears, however, as you see here, I bought four brand new rear brake chambers. There is an upgrade that they did starting in 2004.5 uh, model year builds. Uh, and these are a significant upgrade to the rear brake chambers that were previous. They have larger diaphragms. Um, all of the fittings are also a lot larger. They're half inch. Uh, NPT versus I think that's half inch NPT it's either I think it's either half inch or three eighths NPT I don't know we'll just we'll keep moving forward and say that it's uh, three eighths NPT versus the quarter inch NPT that were on the previous uh, brake chambers also as you may have noticed they have crimped these off instead of put instead of putting clamps on them apparently um, soldiers in the army were killing themselves or getting injured by taking these off without um, putting a uh, t-bolt in here and tightening this down so that there was no pressure in these there's a tremendous amount of pressure in those by the way if you do not cage these so uh, I will leave links in the description for these. Uh, surprisingly, these were less than five bucks a piece. It's a real simple upgrade. I will go over that in the video here a little bit. Also, if you want something for the threads on all of these fittings, you can either go with this, which I will leave a link in the description, or this. This is just something Rick had left over that I'm using up. Um, well, yeah, I'll take you through the uh, process here. I'm not going to do any time lapse, but I'll just keep you updated like I did in the last video. Uh, as always, let's get started. Okay, I got that fitting replaced on both sides. And then I, I've taken this apart. There's really not much to it, guys. Um, it's just literally a, a clamp with some 15 millimeter nuts on it and you pull it apart and then you're gonna have this diaphragm that comes out this happens to be a Bendix one uh, the replacements that I got are Velvac I don't think it makes a difference they're all the same size it's a type 16 so we'll get those swapped in here on both sides and then we'll start moving towards the rear okay I got both of the pancake diaphragms done uh, they don't take very long, by the way, maybe 10 minutes. The longest time to do this is uh, getting the clamps lined back up, lined back up, and then um, 
getting the bolt through there and getting it tightened down. Uh, the newer pancakes are a little bit thicker, so uh, the clamps want to fight you a little bit on that. But yeah, I got the fittings done on both sides and that done, so now the fronts are done and we're going to move on to the rears. For the rears, I'm going to do one side at a time so I can mirror the hose connections off of the other side. These are looking pretty shoddy. Um, the reason I bought new brake chambers is because I didn't want to deal with all the snapped off fittings and I actually got a really good deal on those brake chambers. They were only a couple hundred bucks each. Um, so I figured it was good preventive maintenance. I'm gonna start taking this stuff apart. I'm gonna have to take that hose block off of there and snip all these tie wraps and then start labeling things. And uh, hopefully these brake chambers come off kind of friendly. I've been hitting them all week with PB Blaster. So fingers crossed on that scenario. Anyhow, let's get started. Okay, we're at a point now where I've got everything set up. This chamber is caged. I'm gonna attempt to start working it loose using a pipe wrench. And I'll probably slide a piece of pipe over there to get some leverage on it. Fingers crossed it doesn't snap off in there. Abel is actually working uh, with me today rather than against me. Um, these weren't too bad. The hoses weren't too bad. And now we're just getting ready to start putting all the fittings in there. And the crossovers. So I'll show you guys what that looks like here when I'm done. Okay, this is what your preliminary setup should look like. You're going to have your quick disconnect air brake line fittings crossing over like this so they match up <laughs> and now all you have left to do is run four hoses so this is your CTIS this is your vent and if I remember right this is your upper modulator and this is your lower one I'll go through and route all the hoses and then I'll show you guys where they ended up going okay I got all the routing done I got the hose block reattached. Uh, let me explain to you guys where each of these go. Um, you can always do one side at a time and look at the other brake cans, but I'll just go through this with you guys. So this is your CTIS, which comes down and it goes up under there to your CTIS valve. This is your vent, which comes down and lands right here. And then you have these two guys so you have lower and upper and I'll show you what I mean by that under the truck here okay so this one here is your CTIS valve this is your lower and that one up there is your upper so that's what I mean when I say lower and upper and then of course your vent is right there pretty simple Got to bolt all this back together and then start working on this other side. I started this morning about, I don't know, 6, 6.30. It is currently 10 o'clock right now, just to give you an idea of how long it takes. Uh, the second side will obviously go a lot faster. So, anyways, here we go. This side fought with me a little bit, getting the old brake chambers out. They didn't want to uh, unscrew so I ended up using a, uh, a rolling floor jack right here with a uh, six by six on it and then hooked a pipe wrench onto there and then jacked up the floor jack to hit that wrench and uh, get them started and then I was able to get them out. But yeah, we're still moving along. Um, I've only been working on this side for about two hours now. Just to give you an idea, I've just got to get rid of the old hoses and then reroute the new ones. Okay, here we are. I got the uh, second side done. I had to go to the hardware store because that through bolt there, it's a 4 inch by 5 16 24 thread pitch. Uh, it snapped off uh, on this side, so I bought two brand new ones. 
don't know if you could see the one on the other side there, but I just replaced both of them. The other one was kind of shoddy too, so. But yeah, I got all this routed. Uh, looks like I need one more tie wrap right there on this guy so it's not rubbing against the, I guess it's not rubbing against anything. Uh, yeah, this side fought with me a little bit. It is currently uh, 1230, so this side took about two and a half hours. Uh, gonna bolt the wheel and tire combo back on and then uh, test the brakes here in the driveway to see if they actually work or if they blow apart or if I have any leaks uh, before I actually road test the system. So stay tuned. Okay, got everything bolted together, put back where it should be. Um, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys is when you're putting this kit together, make sure you rotate your cans because this fitting on the on the back can on both sides runs really close to the wheel but if you rotate your cans forward you'll get like an inch inch and a half clearance on that um, just something to be aware of when you're putting this kit together uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in the cab of the truck start it up and uh, do a test to see if uh, there's leaks or the parking brake doesn't release or any of the multiple things that could probably happen uh, when you go through and change the system like this so yeah I guess that's what I'll do next and then uh, I'll come back well guys I went for a quick maybe eight mile test ride and everything seems to be working the way it should there's no leaks um, none of the fittings snapped off none of the hoses blew off so uh, I will consider that a success it is currently about three o'clock so it took me most of the day to do this but uh, the results kind of speak for themselves no more junky crusty hoses and all brand new brake chambers uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out if you guys are looking to purchase one of these kits, I will leave a link in the description to Superior Subi and Imports. Here's their contact information. Make sure you ask for Rick and uh, he'll hook you up with one of these kits. But other than that, I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you like this episode, Give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You're going to want to stay tuned. You never know what's coming up on this channel. There might be more brake upgrades. You never know. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other. And as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.